Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, events involving and. This is related to conditional probability because and the conditional probability formula had the probability of A and B in it. So remember, probability of B given that A had occurred is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. So we can rearrange that equation by multiplying both sides by the probability of A, and we actually get a formula for the probability of A and B. The probability of A and B occurring is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Now you might remember that we've said over and over again that when you see the word not, it involves subtraction. When you see the word or, it involves addition. And when you see the word and, it involves multiplication. And you see the multiplication coming up right here. Now, if A and B happen to be independent, re realize that this probability of B given that A has occurred would just be the probability of B. So you would just be multiplying the probability of A times the probability of B if the two events are independent. Again, independent events, the probability of one event and the other both happening can be found by multiplying the probabilities of each of them happening. If you have dependent events, then you have to multiply the probability of one by the probability of the other given that the first has occurred. So here we have a bowl full or a jar full of balls of different colors. And it says Jeff draws balls from the jar below. He draws two balls without replacement. Find the probability that he gets a red and then a blue ball in that order. All right, so we want to know the probability that he gets a red and a blue ball in that order. And why is it significant that it says without replacement? Can anyone tell me why it's significant when we say without replacement? So he's going to draw a ball. He's not going to be putting it back in and then he's going to draw again. That's right. So it's going to affect the number of possible outcomes will be one less on the second draw, right? Okay. <clears throat> so this is how we would work the problem. First of all, without replacement always means dependent events. What does that mean? That means the knowledge that one has occurred will always affect the uh, uh, probability of the other occurring because you've reduced the size of the sample space. And that's right, it'll be no repetition to, uh-huh. We're not gonna get the same ball twice. So let's count how many of each color we have. We have four red, three blue, and two yellow. Now what we're looking for, this is my notation for R1 means we drew a red ball on the first draw, and B2 means we drew a blue ball on the second draw. Now according to the formula we just saw, you multiply the probability of R1, red on the first draw, times the probability of getting a blue ball on the second draw given that we know the first one was red. All right, so the probability of drawing a red on the first draw is going to be, we have four reds out of a total of nine balls altogether. So that's where we get the four ninths from. But once you've drawn that red ball, then how many blue balls are there and how many balls are left total? There are one, two, three blues out of eight altogether. So that's where the three eighths comes from. And we need to multiply because it's an and. <clears throat> so we're gonna have multiplying, you can either multiply straight across and get 12 over 72 and then reduce. Or um, another way would be to reduce three goes into three once, three goes into nine three times, four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice, multiply straight across then, and you'll skip directly to the one-sixth, which is approximately 0.1667. Okay, so that's an example of an and problem. So whenever you're doing an and problem, you multiply, but 
you have to take into consideration that the first uh, thing has already occurred. All right, let's consider if we change this to with replacement. Okay, so it says Jeff draws balls from the jar below. He draws two balls, this time with replacement. So he's gonna take one out and he's gonna put it back. Find the probability that he gets a red and then a blue ball in that order. So because the ball is replaced, repetitions are allowed so that means event b2 drawing a blue on the second draw is independent of r1 the probability of one will not affect the other so whenever you see with replacement you know these are independent events and you won't have to worry about the probability of one given that the other has occurred you can just multiply each probability so again we have four red three blue two yellow the probability of red on the first draw and blue on the second draw is just the probability of drawing a red on the first draw and the probability of drawing a blue. You don't have to say given that red has occurred. You could, but it's not gonna affect anything. So we're just gonna multiply four ninths, the number of reds divided by the total number of balls, nine times, in this case, not 3 eighths, but 3 ninths, because all the balls are back in there. They've been replaced. So that means that we can multiply straight across, get 12 over 81, which reduces, if you divide each part by 3, to 4 over 27, or 0.148. Notice that there's a slightly smaller chance now, because we put that one red ball back in, so there's a slightly less of a chance of getting a blue on the second draw. The next uh, item I wanna look at says a pet store has 14 puppies, including five poodles, five terriers, and four retrievers. If Rebecca and Aaron, in that order, each select one puppy at random with replacement, that means they might both select the same one, Find the probability that Rebecca selects a terrier and Aaron selects a retriever. So in this case, with replacement means these are independent events. So you can just find the probabilities of each and multiply them together and still means multiply. Okay, because there is a replacement, the events are independent. So we're gonna find the probability that Rebecca selects a terrier. Well, there are five terriers out of the 14 puppies. So 5 14ths is that probability. Then we're gonna find the probability that Aaron selects a retriever. Well, that's gonna be four out of 14, which reduces to 2 7 And then we're going to multiply 5 14 times 2 7 the order doesn't matter, and you're gonna get 10 over 98, which if you divide both those by two, you get 549. So the probability that Rebecca selects a terrier and Aaron selects a retriever is 549. Okay, the most important concepts here are number one, and means multiply, and number two, with replacement means independent events. Okay, this example I, I really like uh, because it combines some concepts that we've learned. So it makes it a little bit tricky, but I think once you see it, you'll understand. It says, if it snows tomorrow, the probability is 0 0.5 that John will practice his trumpet. If it does not snow tomorrow, there is only a 0 0.4 chance that John will practice. Suppose that the chance of snow tomorrow is 60%. What's the probability that John will practice his trumpet? So what's interesting about this problem is we have to consider different cases because we have the extra variable of snow or not snow. So de de the probability will depend on whether there's snow or not but we know the probability of snow as well. So when you see the word or there, remember or means add, probability of this or that. Another way of saying that is we have two cases and we have to add the probabilities of the two cases. 
Okay, so what we want, you always need to, when you're working a word problem like this, we need to organize our thoughts, right? So what we want is we want to know the probability that either it snows and John practices or there's no snow and John practices because either of those cases results, the result is that John practices and that's what we want to figure out the probability of. So either it snows and John practices or no snow and John practices. So the or means add, but the and means multiply. And we have two of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use multiplication to find the probability that it snows and John practices. And we're gonna use multiplication to find the probability of no snow and John practicing. But then we're gonna to add together the two possible, uh, the two probabilities to get the total probability. Now in order to find the probability that it snows and John practices, we're gonna to have to multiply the probability of snow times the probability that John practices given that snow has happened. So we're gonna need the probability of snow and the probability of practicing given snow. And in order to find the probability of no snow and John practicing, Again, we're going to need the probability of no snow multiplied by the probability that he practices given that no snow has occurred. Okay, so what's the probability that he will practice given no snow, or given snow has occurred rather? So let's go back to our, um, going back to the description of the problem, it tells us flat out that the probability is 0.5 that John will practice his trumpet if it snows and it's only 0.4 if it, if it doesn't snow. So if it snows, 0.5. If it doesn't snow, 0.4. We're also told that the chance of snow is 60%. So the probability that it will snow is 0 0.60 or just 0 0.6. So how would you find the probability of no snow? So that's a complement, isn't it? So remember the probability of something happening is one minus the probability that it doesn't and vice versa. They have to add up to one. So this is gonna be one minus 0.6 is 0.4. Okay, so we have the four pieces that we need to do the calculation that we want. Remember, the probability of snow and John practicing would be the probability of snow, which is 0.6 times the probability of snow, um, probability that he practices given that snow has occurred, which would be the 0.5. Or means plus. Now the probability of no snow would be 0.4 times practicing given no snow is also 0.4. So that means that we have 0.3 plus 0.16 which turns out to be 0 0.46. 0 0.46 is the probability that he's gonna practice. So that's all summarized here on this slide. So this is a pretty complicated problem, but I hope it helps to illustrate that the or is add, and that the and is multiply, and that when you have an and, you have to take into consideration that the uh, first thing has occurred. So you have to use the probability of B given A. Okay, that's where we're gonna stop today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.